Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and you all look really wide awake. Did you enjoy the thunderstorm this morning? It made it tough to get up out of bed, didn't it? Those are just great moments to sleep in. So, well, I'm glad you're all here. I'm glad you didn't sleep in. And, uh, well, you didn't sleep in. Yeah. I don't usually get to sleep in on Sundays. In fact, I can't remember the last time we got to sleep in. Can you, honey? So, uh, it's good to see y'all out. And the sun is shining now, finally. Somebody, or Tori said they came through Walton and uh, train cars were over on their side. So. Somebody said the wind. Was it Evelyn? Said she heard the wind. Wind blew them over. Okay. So there's some big winds in Walton. You can't blame me. I don't preach in Walton. So. <laughs> But it's good to see you all out, and uh, if there's some announcements, make your way forward. I will start us off on the back of your bulletin on coming events. You will see uh, September 22nd, we will be having our, our district superintendent will be here to conduct a, our disaffiliation vote. And uh, uh, we just wanted to start announcing it now because we know everybody makes plans. But this is a, a kind of a, a well, it, it's a really important vote, and uh, it's for members only. Uh, that's all that the conference will recognize. Now, when you come here, you know, we, it, it, we're like Olive Garden. If you're here, you're family. But uh, the conference looks at it differently, and so it, it will be a vote of the membership. Everybody's welcome to attend. You can attend, you just may not be able to vote. But, uh, the DS will be here to explain uh, what all this means and the, the possible implications. Nothing is for sure, and, uh, and in fact, uh, there have been some events <coughs> taking place in the last week that, uh, that the conference is not sure how to do this either. So it's a learning process for everybody, but uh, we're trying to be patient and cooperative, and we're doing all that we can. Uh, to, to do it, but we are still moving ahead. That, and no proxy votes, they don't allow that. Right, no, no proxy votes. No, uh, you have to be here. There are no absentee ballots. So, uh, uh, but uh, we are, at council was united, and we're moving ahead. Whether the denomination knows what they're doing or not, we are moving ahead. So, uh, mark your calendars, September 22nd, uh, I even know of a few people that are uh, rearranging their travel plans to, so that they can be here. So uh, there is that going on. Also, August 25th is family night and uh, pizza and bingo. B-I-N-G-O. You're going to have a good time. And uh, we need you to bring uh, your white... <laughs> yeah, you didn't think I could spell. I know. Um, but uh, bring your white elephant prizes uh, for giveaways. When somebody wins a bingo and shouts bingo, they get a prize. So uh, bring, go through your house, your garage, your workshop. Bring the stuff that you don't use anymore um, and that you would like to bless somebody else with. That's the way we say it, Christian circles. We're blessing you with this that I haven't used in 20 years. So, uh, bring those things out. There will be no truth project that night. Okay, well, we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna play bingo. So, uh, come on out for that. That's always a good time. It's just a good time of fun and visiting and usually eating. So, all right. Um, some other announcements that aren't in your bulletin, uh, August 28th, uh, there will be a nominating team meeting here at the church at 7 o'clock, and also on September 3rd, the Christmas program team is going to meet on September 3rd, uh, if you can do that. It'll be a short meeting, so, all right? You got one, all right. 
I kind of dropped the ball on a trap shoot this year, but a couple of people asked yesterday, and and I kind of was busy, busy this month. So we're going to shoot for the 14th of September. And I don't know if that's conflict or anything or not, but it's a Saturday, and we'll probably start shooting around 5:30. And if you want to bring something to eat? We can eat around 7:30. But there will be cows in the way this year, so we can't really have pistols or rifles around. We can have shotguns. So. But there may be some live backdrops. <laughs> Shooting for the 14th of September. All right. That'll be a lot of fun. So, guys, start getting those shotguns out. Practicing up. Yeah. Tori just said behind me, fresh beef. This girl's pretty good shot. They are. And, and yeah, yeah, this isn't a man thing. This is a thing. So, this is an outreach thing. This is invite your friends, yes. So uh, come on out for that. Just wanted to mention that choir will be starting up again the Wednesday after Labor Day. So if you are so inclined to come join us, we would love to have you. Wanda and I were talking this morning. We hear all your really good voices out there. So we'd like, love for you to come and join the choir. It's on Wednesday starting at, from 7 to 7.30. All right. So, choir, let's get her done. And uh, there's always room for more, right? Absolutely. So, good deal. Good deal. What is this? <laughs> Boy, you... <laughs> Tori, does it... Did you find that one or did Amber? I... Okay. She just flicks it. Yeah. All right. I keep cutting out here. Did you notice that? Did you hear it? Might be the battery. Might be the battery. Now it's doing a whole lot more. Look at that. That's exciting. Technical difficulties. Well, while he's working on that, I'll give you another important announcement. Your daily funny for the day, you know, with me being up here as worship leader. Let's turn that down maybe just a little bit. <laughs> what kind of school do you go to if you're an ice cream man? Sunday school. <laughs> what kind of school do you go to if you're a giant? High school. What kind of school do you go to if you're a surfer? Boarding school. And what kind of school do you go to if you're King Arthur? Night school. He's here all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And if there's no other announcements, I think I can talk loud enough. I've never been accused of being too quiet. Uh, we got a cake. We got some birthdays. I know we got some birthdays. <laughs> Anybody here have an anniversary? Anybody grow wiser? 
Birthdays, we grow older. If you're married another year, trust me, you're growing wiser. Lori <laughs> and I will be married 39 years tomorrow.
look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blank. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you.
prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we come into Your presence. We've entered into Your house this morning. Impress us with Your presence. There's things that have happened this week to each of us that we would rather just leave in the past. Help us to remember that You have left them there. Help us to look forward to this next week. Help us to be in Your presence this morning and just take in Your beauty and, and Your matchless. Nothing can compare to being in Your presence, Lord. We just ask that You be with us throughout this service. Touch our hearts and touch our minds. Help us to remember that You are right there with us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kids, come on down. You're the next contestant. sisters but you know sometimes we kind of quit doing that stuff don't we sometimes it's easy just to not listen to our parents right when they ask us to clean our room or you know if there's somebody at school that the kids are kind of making fun of sometimes we don't stick up for that kid and unfortunately sometimes we kind of get in the trap of making fun of those kids or if we see somebody that is crying Sometimes we forget to go help them, right? Right? Or we fight with our brothers and sisters at home. <laughs> we don't clean our room when mom and dad ask us to clean our room. Right? Sometimes we aren't nice to our teachers at school. So when that happens, we lose our armor from God. And then what happens? Well, I'm supposed to be sinking, though. <laughs> when I get this at home, it sunk. Anyway, it's supposed to be sinking. So I don't know what happened. Shot that experiment. Maybe it's not the whole place cleansed. He filled the water. 
<laughs> anyway, it's supposed to be sinking. It's it's well, blank, blank. It's sunk at home. Maybe it just needs to absorb some more water and check that it will sink. Anyway, it's supposed to sink. It did at home. I'm sorry about this. But sometimes, sometimes when we let go, Satan get under our skin, we sink. We need to remember to have our armor on with God to do what God wants us to do. Don't be like this that's supposed to be sinking. <laughs> we have to keep our skin on. Okay, don't let Satan under our skin. Okay, remember to read our Bible. Be nice to those kids at school. Help somebody. If you see someone in the hall kind of struggling, say, what can I do to help you? Okay? Let's always remember to be nice, to pray, to help those kids so that Satan doesn't get under our skin and we sink like that's supposed to be doing. Okay? That would help. If I poke it, it will help, right? Let's poke it. Does this really work at home, folks? Can I get it? Yeah, the keys are I'm going to poke it. I can't see it, baby. Just, here, we'll just poke it a lot. There we go. We'll make sure this thing sees. Maybe it's a defective orange. Maybe. But I did it earlier and it really worked, guys. <laughs> well, that orange just doesn't want to give up. You yeah, guys try it at home. Really, it works. Okay, then you can eat the orange. So, okay, let's say a prayer, guys, okay? Dear God, sometimes, as we can see by this, things don't always go our way. But we know that you will protect us and take care of us. And as long as we keep you in our hearts and not let Satan get under our skin, that you will be there for us and show us the light. Make sure as we begin this new school year that remember to always put you first and that we lead by your example. And these things we pray on there. Okay. Well, sorry, guys. Sarah, that's always my biggest fear when I do children's stories. Really it's just never going to turn out like it does at home. I played in the orange one. I'm not sure which one. If I can have our ushers come forward, we will take up the morning offering. Please bow with me, Bert. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything that we have that you have given to us in this world. We thank you for the roofs over our heads, for the ability to go to work and to earn a living, for all of the things that we have to enjoy life, to have fun, for the food that is on our table. Lord, here in your house, help us as your children to be able to reach outside of these four walls and to share your word and to spread the good news of what you've planned for us to do in this world with our hands. We just bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Father, what a what a blessing it is to be able to gather together. Truly as a family. And uh, and just praise you. Lord, the songs this morning, I'd much rather spend one day in your house, one day in your courts, than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, uh, where your presence is, it's holy ground. And we thank you for that. And we, we just ask that you would uh, minister to the needs that have been shared here. Some needs are so personal and intimate to us that we don't share them. But they're, they're going up to you right now. And we don't need to know because you're our Father. You know. And so we just, we just pray and ask that those who are sharing unspoken needs right now with you, that you would uh, meet their needs, hear their prayer. Lord, for these that have been shared, for those that are traveling, we pray and ask that you would watch over and keep them safe as they travel. Lord, uh, keep your hand upon them. We think of those that are struggling physically, those facing chemo, those facing possible surgeries, uh, those who have shared uh, that they are going to the doctor for injuries. Lord, uh, I pray and ask that you would give the doctors wisdom and that you would work through them. Help them to perform to the very best of their ability. Give them insight into the struggles of the body that these are facing. Lord, we, we just pray and ask that You would be with each one of us as we are daily making big decisions. Some decisions affect our life. Some affect our, our body and our health. Lord, some of them affect our livelihood and our future. We just pray and ask that Your Holy Spirit would give wisdom and direction in those situations. And Lord, we just, uh, we just thank You for the promise of tomorrow. We don't need to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself, You said. And we don't need to worry about today, for You give us today our daily bread. And so we, we just want to focus our attention on praising You because You're worthy of it. You bless us in so many ways that we take for granted way too often. And I pray and ask that You would help us to open up our eyes to see evidence of Your presence in this world around us. Your Word says that no man will be given an excuse when we stand before You because of the wonders of Your creation. Lord, even if a preacher wasn't able to preach the Word, Your creation cries out with evidence of Your presence. And so, Lord, we thank You for the privilege of being called Your children. And Lord, we ask that You would uh, just continue to uh, work in our lives to transform us into what You would have us be, what You created us to be. And Lord, uh, these requests that have been made here today, we ask that You would answer them and do it in such a way that our faith is increased and honor and glory are brought to Your holy name. That's the most important thing. And so we, we give You this time and this place and we ask that You would continue to minister in us and Lord, we open our lives for You to minister through us to those around us. Give us boldness to speak the truth of Your love, and of Your grace, and of Your mercy, and of Your salvation that You offer to all men. Lord, we just thank You for that privilege. And now we ask that You would keep our hearts attentive to your word. May the truth change us today. Transform us. May we think more like you. And in doing so, act more like you. And do the things in our life 
that you would have us to do. And so we ask that you would remind us of the prayer and teach us to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Jerry Smith is going to come and share with us. Uh, I chose this hymn because it's one of my dad's favorite. favorites.
for that, Jerry. Or Mr. Smith, as <laughs> many of us in this church know him as. If you'll please stand as you're able, we will join together and well, we'll not join together. We will read this morning's scripture. It comes from John chapter 5, verses 2 through 9. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who was there had been in invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in his condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. we got quite a thing going on up here. Tori and I earlier, we leaned over and we was talking. We had Tori and me and Rod. I leaned over to Rod and said, kick Kevin in the knee and poke Lynn in the eye and we'll all do what you say. <laughs> it's good that we can joke about this. But uh, we looked at this passage starting last week and the question, that pointed question, do you want to get well? And we, we kind of went through that. But that is the question that Jesus asked us. He always asks us, what do we want? Do you want to get well? Do you really truly want to get well? And so we looked at that, and, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking and going back over that, um, but I do find it interesting that, uh, that Jesus just pointed, pointed to the asking, if you, do you want to get well? Because he'd been going there for years. And as I said last week, he thought he'd have got a spot closer to the pool. But sometimes we do things out of habit. We find that place that we like. It doesn't matter what the effects of it are on our life. You just... It, it, I can say this, and I know it to be true, because I've done this, I've pastored for a lot of years, and in every church, even the church I grew up in, everybody sits in the same spot. <laughs> Man, you throw a monkey wrench into the whole works if you sit in the wrong spot. I can remember... Uh, uh, Gary's uncle, my buddy Gary who comes and visits, his uncle uh, was the uh, uh, head usher in, a, in my home church. And uh, we, we always used to, he had, he, he, when he talked, even when he whispered, everybody heard. Uh, he couldn't hear well, he had two hearing aids, and this was, you know, when we were teenagers. And, uh, and I remember we had a, uh, I've shared with you a, a time or two that there would be times when, uh, because of our pastor being a former gospel piano player in uh, gospel groups, there would be times when we pull up to church and there's the Cathedral Quartet's bus parked out in front of our church or the Weatherford Quartet. Some of, the, some of you are looking like, who are those? You know, um, it might, uh, so we would show up and there would maybe be something and then this particular Sunday there was something going on and the church was packed you know and uh, on, uh, that was in the day when people could buy a pew and their name was on the end of that pew on the placard and of course he was the head usher 
man, everybody filled up and he'd come in and his wife was standing in the back, Harry's aunt, and somebody was sitting in their pew. <laughs> I mean, in their spot. And their pew was about where Fred's at. And they were whispering in the back of the church. But they weren't whispering. <laughs> they thought they were whispering. And he kept saying, there's somebody sitting in our pew! There's... What are we going to do? Doris, what are we going to do? There's somebody sitting in our pew! And it was just about that loud because he couldn't hear. <laughs> Obviously, it, it struck us as funny. You know, but it was a serious deal with him. But it goes to prove the point that, that we are creatures of habit. And I, 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 I can only assume that this, this invalid man had gone to that pool for so many years and, and you know they never knew when the waters were going to stir. It wasn't like it happened every day. And so he probably found himself a place where, where he was comfortable, maybe in the shade, maybe because he'd be there all day. Maybe a place where he was with some people who, who he got along with. I don't know what he's what his uh, uh, situation was and what was going through his mind. But apparently Jesus understood something. Do you want to get well? And if you do, what have you done to do that? And so we asked the guy, do you want to get well? And the guy says, I've come here for 38 years. Like, that's a, an answer. I've come here for 38 years. And somebody always beats me to the pool when the waters are stirring. Now you and I would have said, well, get closer. But Jesus doesn't even hear that excuse. He just says, take up your mat. Some of the versions say pallet. We think of a wood pallet, but pallet back in those days was a bedding. Take up your pallet. Take up your bed and walk. And so the guy does. And Jesus uh, apparently said it with authority, convincingly. And the guy gets up and he walks. And it tells us that this was on the Sabbath. And that's where we're going to direct it today. Tori shared the Scripture that is our key Scripture. It is the springboard that's going to send us into the rest of this. And so uh, uh, Jesus said to him, Rise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, and he took up his bed and he walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is unlawful. Now listen to this. It is unlawful for you to carry your bed. I will make no apologies when I say this. Religious folks can sometimes irritate me. They just can. We, some, some folks get so wrapped up I mean, the guy, he had been healed. They didn't jump for joy and say, Hey, you're walking, buddy. Whoa, what happened? That's not what they said. The first thing out of their mouth was, Hey, this is the Sabbath. It's unlawful for you to be carrying your bed. It's probably a good thing I didn't live back then because my mouth would have got me in trouble because I, I, I am a quick to shoot it off sometimes. And so, the Jews therefore said to him, it's the Sabbath, it's unlawful for you to carry your bed. He, he immediately answers, he who made me well. Now, now, that may have been an attempt at him to say, by him to say, look, eh? I'm walking, hello. Hello. He who made me well said, take up your mat and walk. Who was it that told you to do this? <laughs> guy goes, I, I don't know. I didn't ask for his credentials. I didn't ask for his email address. I didn't ask for his website. He made me well. I took up my mat and I walked. I was so excited. He... Now, if you, if you hadn't have... We, we can only assume that he hadn't done this for 38 years, as the Scripture says. So 
This was a big deal for him. He wasn't concerned about Jesus' name. He was thrilled with the fact that he'd been healed. You know, sometimes we miss out on what God is doing in our life because He doesn't do it the way we want to, wanting to. Sometimes churches, I've seen it. The Spirit of God can pour out on a church service. And because God does something different and He doesn't do it according to their expectations and He doesn't do it with their outcome that they have presupposed in their mind, they say, well, that's not of God. It was about uh, 1998. I had been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Pretty rare in men, I guess. I was taking Flexeril three times a day. Uh, the church I was pastoring, we were getting ready. We just purchased a building on Main Street, right downtown. We were going to turn it into a youth center. We did turn it into a youth center. We had anywhere from 180 to 200 teens every Saturday night down there for church service. Well, we just purchased the building. We were getting ready to remodel it. And back then, we still had Sunday night service. I had a few in my church. They had it all figured out. You know, Nominal Christians come on Sunday morning. The growing Christians come on Sunday night. And the saints of God come on Wednesday. I have to be honest with you, there weren't very many saints. That was, of course, baloney. That's a Greek word. <laughs> and so, we had a Sunday night service and I had a, we had an a older couple retired couple started coming to our church. Godly people. We just loved spending time with them, didn't we? Bernice and Leo, they were just godly people. And they were such fun people. Uh, and uh, uh, he was an old... He, I mean, he had done everything. He'd been a cowboy and he'd run a grain elevator. And he was just a, a fun guy. But they were serious about their relationship with God. And, uh, and they were absolute prayer warriors. And a Sunday night service now in the, in the Wesleyan church that I pastored, the pulpit sat right here. We didn't have railings. We had steps that went down all the way across. And had the pulpit sitting right here. And we had a Sunday night song service. It was pretty relaxed, you know. And, uh, and we have a few hymns lined up and then we take requests and say, who, who, who's got a song? You ever been in that kind of service? Who's got a song they want to sing? And if, my rule was, if I didn't know it, then you had to come up and lead it. That narrowed the field. And so we were having that kind of service and we had testimonies. Who here would like to share something that God's been laying on your heart or something, maybe a blessing He'd give you this week. People pop up. You know, it was fun. And uh, Leo stood up. And he sat in my in that church, he sat about where uh, Jackie and Melanie and Larry are, right about in that, that area. And, and uh, he stood up. And I could still see his face today. Uh, he said, Pastor, he says, we have been praying for you. And he says, while we've been here singing, he said, the Holy Spirit has been, has been uh, uh, just really speaking to my heart. And he says, uh, I just feel like we need to have prayer for you. We've got a lot of things coming up in this church in the way of ministry, and we need to have prayer for you. I believe God wants to heal you. And when he said that, you know, I kind of glanced around. Because a lot of times... Even in church, when we when we start talking about God healing, you always have a few people going, oh boy, here we go. And so, 
I didn't hesitate a moment. I looked around and I said, Leo, I said, since the Lord's been speaking to you, I'm going to hand it over to you. How do you want it handled? And he says, Pastor, I'd like you to come right down here off the platform. And he says, anybody who'd like to gather around the pastor and lay hands on him, you can come on up. We're going to have a time of prayer for our pastor. And I stepped down there, and I don't know how many people came up. Not everybody came up, but a lot of people came up. And Leo let out a prayer, and then a couple others prayed. We went on with the service. Monday morning, I woke up first morning since 1992 that I hadn't had pain. They told me I couldn't play golf again. The doctor said I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things by the time I was 40. I'll tell you the truth. God healed me that day. I am. I hadn't had that kind of muscular pain since. Oh, I, don't get me wrong. I, my leg after yesterday, my wife had to rub it last night. Because a one-legged creature, you know, you, you, that one leg gets tired. <laughs> she going to probably have to rub it again today after this sermon. <laughs> but the, the, the disease that caused extreme pain. It caused me to have to go home some days in the afternoon and just lay down and sometimes bring tears to my eyes. That pain was gone. I played softball. That's when I could still play softball. Played racquetball after that. Went golfing. I'm not very good at it, Bonnie. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just ride around in the car. <laughs> Make everybody else miss the ball. You know, that's what old softball players do when they play golf. Guy gets ready to swing, he goes, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Wrong sport. Wrong sport. Sorry. My ball. My ball. When I read this passage, I'm reminded of that. There were some people who were just really uncomfortable with the idea that God would actually heal. In fact, there were some people who said, well, God doesn't do that nowadays. And my Bible says He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He's going to be the same tomorrow as He was today and yesterday. That's what my Bible says. I don't know what Bible they were reading. And so we look at that and, and, and Jesus, they said, who healed you? Who was this man? He goes, I don't know. Jesus had kind of drifted into the crowd. You know, I have a lot of people who, uh, who, who like to come to church. Back in my church in Iowa, it was all, uh, quite a bit larger. And there would be people who would come and they'd slip in and then they'd slip out unnoticed, they thought. And so Jesus kind of melted into the crowd. Didn't stand out, didn't wait for people to gather around. Jesus did what he, he does, what he does, and then he goes off. He's not standing there waiting for accolades from the crowd. He goes on and he, he drifts into the crowd. And the uh, interesting thing, and there's my last point, it says afterwards, in verse 14, afterwards, Jesus found him, the man that he healed in the temple, and he said to him, See, you've been made well. <laughs> now, that's exciting. See, you've been made well. Then he says this. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. You know what? There are worse things. Jesus was really telling him. You know, you have struggled and you've suffered and you've gone through all the difficulties with the physical challenges that you face, but there are things worse in this world. There are things worse than having a physical challenge. Sin will kill you. <coughs> Jesus 
I believe told him that because, you know, there are probably a lot of things. Boy, I'd like to do that one day. Anybody here ever had a bucket list? You know, that was a big thing, bucket list. What's, anybody, just cry out a couple of things. I'm not going to call on you by name. Just shout out. Anybody got a bucket list? Want to do something before you die? Go to Alaska. Go to Alaska. Skydive. Sky, <laughs> there, is, there is no reason to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. The airplane is not perfectly good. It's just, it's just <laughs> Anyone else? We got to go to Alaska. We got to jump out of a perfectly good plane. Hawaii. Hawaii. You know, you can't say the word Hawaii, and in my head I hear, da 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 It's just me. Somebody wants to go to Hawaii. Deep sea fishing. Don't milk any more cows. Don't milk any more cows. Yeah. I think that guy probably had a bucket list. After 38 years of, of being uh, an invalid, he probably had things that he would do if, if he could. He probably saw people uh, walking by and, and experiencing things and, and uh, probably heard stories about things that people have done. And he said, you know what, doggone it, when I'm, well, I'm, if I ever get into that pool, I am going to do some things. I'm going to live. And Jesus comes along and He makes him well. He answers his prayer. He does what Jesus does best. He lifts us up from the miry muck that we find ourselves in, the daily stuff that keeps us down, that keeps us from experiencing the blessing of God. Jesus comes along and He does that for the man. And then the man walks away. And yes, he experiences some criticism. But the reality of it is when Jesus comes back around, He he says, listen, you've been made well. Now, take the life that you have and live it carefully for there are worse things than being an enemy. There are worse things than physical challenge. Sin, no more. Sin for you and me, we, we kind of uh, given that broad definition. But sin is just simply this. Willful, willful disobedience against God's will. And so what he was saying is, be mindful of the will of God. Because when you get in the habit of telling God no, there are worse things that can happen in your life. Guys, we are called to live life carefully, not carelessly. And the Lord has no problem with us having goals and dreams. If you want to go to Alaska, Jesus is completely good with that, Kevin. Take some good pictures. And Jerry, if you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, I'll take some good pictures. <laughs> Kevin will take some good pictures, man. He's okay with that. But, but let me tell you something. When the Lord lays something upon your heart, when He lays someone upon your heart, and he, you feel that inner voice saying, pray for them. When you, feel that inner, when you hear that inner voice saying, go and visit that person. Give an encouraging word to that person. Invite that person to church. Share what Jesus has done with that person. And you don't do it, to him who knoweth to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You and I have a great blessing. We have the living Christ who resides in us. Don't waste it. Share with him daily the things of your heart. You know what I've been praying since we've been going through the Truth Project? When I go to the Lord in prayer, I say, Lord, I'm here because I believe, I actually truly believe that You will do what Your Word says that You will do 
and you are who your word says you are. And so I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret about these things. I lay them before your throne, and I'm just going to trust you. Man, my life's been a whole lot better. Now I'm talking about a preacher who's been doing this 32 years. I've prayed a lot in my life. And I've prayed with faith. And I've prayed believing. But every once in a while, all of us get into that habit of saying, well, you know, I wonder if it's really going to happen. If God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. might not happen in our time. might not happen the way we want it, but it's going to happen. Don't ever doubt Jesus' ability. Do you want to get well? He can make you well. And when He makes you well, don't fritter it away. It's a precious gift. Father, I thank You for the truth of Your Word. And I thank You, Jesus, for Your presence in our life. What a thrill it is to know that I am never alone. That kind of reminds me of the song, Lord. Never alone. We are never alone. Lord, I pray and ask that if there are those here today that need to get well, maybe they've got a physical challenge, maybe they've got a spiritual hurt or injury, maybe they've got some emotional hurts and challenges in their life, maybe they've got some circumstantial or relational challenges that are hindering them and it's got their heart down. Lord, ask that question of us. Do you want to get well? And let us put away the excuses. And let us just answer, yes, Lord. And let You do what You do best. Lord, I pray and ask that You would help us to live life carefully, not carelessly. And that You would draw us close to You each and every day. That we may know Your name in an intimate way. When somebody asks us, when that challenge has been met by You, who did this for You? Who made You well? How did You get through that circumstance or that situation? Let us without hesitation say, our Lord Jesus Christ did. And we'll be quick to thank You once again for Your answer to our prayers. In Christ's name we ask this. Amen. Say it with me if you would. One last song. What's the name? Just a second, I got it right here. Why do I sing about Jesus? Who knows that? Wanda does. You have to lead it. people said